Bess Abulur joins me from California today. Thank Hello, you. Sir. Thank you. I feel like a hero. Well, by the way, have you been to the La Jolla Playhouse? Uh, you know, the famous, there's a famous theater there. Oh, yeah, Jolla, yeah. I passed by it, you know, two years ago. Where they do Broadway plays before they go to Broadway. They, they, that's they it. Yeah, yeah. Run at the La Jolla. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely anyway. right. Yeah, I, I passed by I didn't go there. No, I'm not a very cultured person. So here's the segue Have you had any good tea in San Diego? You see I'm how show I did you that? something. Yes, I uh, like it. Thank you. You've got a tea right now. Yes. Don't tell him. Look at you. This murky, dark, oxidized yeah. tea. And it's a chemical. The light doesn't, it doesn't even pass through it. There's no milk in it. It's a tea that has been brewed but left outside for a day. So it looks like this. Looks Very like correct. a. Yeah, it looks like a swirl. The reason I kept this for you for two reasons. Why did you keep that for me? That I tell you, old... for this show, for this show, it's only a day. The thing is, it smells like good tea. Is it an experiment that you want to leave tea out for? It tastes great. Oh, I think okay. The tea can go oxidized and look really ugly, but it's still drinkable. The reason I show you this is why I became a heavy tea drinker and the connoisseur and the oh, most you... famous tea, Iranian tea maker in London because of this. About 32 years ago. Oh, this is great. You know, my first question was, tea Why? plays a really important role in your life. Yeah. When did your love affair with tea begin? This. So now you're, yes. Yeah. Fine enough, in my sister-in-law, I'm in my sister-in-law's house with my brother, yeah? So about 22 years ago, I bought a new house and I wanted to serve tea for her mother because she had always really good tea in London. It was all red and dark and, you know, smoked great and stringent and fantastic. So I said, I'm going to save her fantastic. So, so I bought this really nice uh, tea set and I bought some tea and I brewed it for like 10 minutes or something. And I put it in the glass and as I served, it went dark like this. And I remember there was light coming through um, the blinds and you could just see how it was like a mordab. I don't know how you can just put the English word for it, Mordov underneath. And since then, at that moment, I'm going to make the best teas in London. I'm not going to embarrass myself. And that's how it started. And I spent thousands and thousands of pounds. I remember I went to East London because I realized that's where the wholesalers are. And I started reading, reading about it. Then I realized tea has so many different angles. It's much different to coffee. It's more like wine. It's well, about hang on a let me. I'm going to ask you about all of that, but you said something there that I can't let go. You you said, did I hear you say you're the what what is it the foremost the most important tea maker in in Britain in London? What what is the yes in my own opinion? <laughs> you haven't been given a, given an award or no? A, I'm Iranian. I just yeah. claim things without any excuse any reason. I just claim it and I just fight for it and I. Tell people off. So <laughs> I'm self-acclaimed best team maker on the first floor of a Victorian <laughs> house. Even before this episode, this incident yeah. with your family where you, you endeavored to, from then on, make great tea, yes. were you a lover as a kid? Growing Not up really. And... I, was a, I, was a, I was a coffee drinker because when I first moved to London, um, you know, in Iran, we only have Nescafe and somehow in our brain, Nescafe is the coffee. Right. I don't know right. why, because it was an import or something, although we could have fantastic so-called Turkish tea or tea, you know, properly made in tea, co right. in coffee houses. So, so when I went there, I said, oh, my God, coffee, coffee. <laughs> and, then I, and then I got a job at the age of 19 in a, in a punk um, um, market called Great Gear Market. It was the most famous punk market of 1970s. Just see some love coming up. <laughs> what was that? I don't know where that come from. Coming, What's happening right now? I don't know. It's coming from my mouth. <laughs> out of your mouth. Okay. Thank you, Parisa. Anyway, <laughs> I did it. I like that button. No, no. Okay, go ahead. Uh, anyway, uh, yes. And anyway, so I, I started working there. I was very young, and it was. I remember it was like a, like a little island inside this fantastic market. I saw transvestites for the first time. I saw real punks with sharp hair, weird dress. So I, I had to start making cappuccinos. And those is a cappuccino machine had the handle. Hmm. 
And I saw people sitting down with the rat in their head. So imagine a guy from Tehran sitting in there and the coffee. Oh my God, I didn't know they make coffees like this. And yes. since then, I become a cappuccino drinker. But in those days, you could either get to these weird places or you had to go to Italian restaurants to get cappuccino. So it was a weird culture in 1980s, early 1980s. So, so then I became coffee drinker, coffee drinker, coffee drinker. Then till 1999, when I served this tea. And since then, I've become the tea drinker of all time. And I'm, you know, I have, as, huh? As, as a sidebar, I have to say, yeah, uh, this thing, I, I want to do a whole other episode about Nescafe. It's yes. like, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of, it's, it's like modern talking. No one understands how, po- yeah. uh, how, how Iranians can like it so much, except yeah. for Iranians themselves. It's yeah. like, what is this thing with Nescafe? I actually, true story, had a dinner party. It wasn't even that long ago. It was last year. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm very particular about the coffee. I make very strong coffee. I take pride in getting these beans that are, you know, properly know. Great, great roasted, dark roasted. And I actually made the coffee and had two people, it was a couple, but they asked me if we, if I had Nescafe. <laughs> it could do, this is great, do you have Nescafe? And honestly, I was like, what the fuck what are the they talking heck? about? Are they Iranians? Because, I mean, Are they Iranians? Yes, they were Iranian. Oh my That's my God. point. I mean, it was very strange. Shame. It was like, it, yeah, it was very, very odd. It was yeah, like it's, asking, it's a, yeah, it's yeah. a cultural thing, isn't it? Uh, it yeah. reminds me of, um, I mean, um, I went, I was in Dubai or somewhere, and I, there's, there's this in this airport, and there's this uh, about, I think like few Arab boys and girls. They were rushing to go to the airplane and then before that they had to buy lots of these pringles you know the chips the chips yeah. yes that up, uh, nescafe crisps. yeah because i realized in their country they have lots of advertisements and they had to rush and buy lots of it and take it so it is the advertising and the history i remember i had that, my best memories with that nescafe in the teenage life you know good news was, is nescafe, is, nescafe is very cheap here because yes, nobody wants it so uh, exactly <laughs> over there is different um, now I was a little shocked. Uh, I want to get into the tea story with, yeah. and you're you're one of a couple of guests that we're going to have, and and I want to fill in some of the blanks. Yeah, I'm going to go quick over it. Yes. When I learned that tea did not actually even come to Iran uh, until the last five in five hundred years, I yes, mean it was that's true. In, in a major way, it came from yes. China in the 15th century, but was used mostly medicinally and didn't actually become something that Iranians cultivated. Until the 19th century, in fact, the late 19th century. That's right. In fact, and this is, you know, related to our conversation about Nescafe, perhaps. In fact, Iranians were originally coffee drinkers. Yes. And coffee got usurped by tea. Did you know that? Well, you would know. Yes, yes, yes. I know. I read about it. Because I find that fascinating. Because coffee comes from Ethiopia and Yemen, mostly introduced to us through Yemen, South Arabia. And in South Arabia, we have a long history from Achaemenian times. So we always had trading. So that's how it came to us. And it was definitely coffee drinking. But I'm not sure it was a similar way of like a Turkish coffee or something. It was more like Arabic coffee. And right. uh, yeah, that is, that is very true. And, um, and I think the reason that we have this tea and coffee culture was very much because of Islam, I think. Because, um, because alcohol was forbidden. So it was something that you can use in public it was a public drink where right. in europe is completely opposite in a way tea started in aristocracy and conversations and and home and gatherings um but coffee replaced pubs i read about um that um intellectuals would go to coffee houses and ask for this very bitter black drink and the reason they went there because people weren't drunk to have a fight you could drink something and have a conversation. And people would come in with the latest news of the day. So because the, the newspapers were you know, not, not very popular, I mean, they were there, but people would come up with a news. So uh, intellectuals would gather in coffee houses. They would know about daily news and they wouldn't get drunk. They could talk properly. So that's, it's right. quite different to us. But tea, anyway, with, with me started then. Then I started getting into the tea culture. I read books. I went to buy different teapots. Then I realized that Best teapot is Yijing clay. Well, hang on ju- a second. We were talking. We were talking about the history of of tea, and now you started talking about yourself again. Yeah, yeah. Because I went into it. 
Because I am T. Let me, you know? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get to you. Don't worry. Okay. All right. I'm going to get to your practices. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> but you live. Stick, with you me, live. stick with me with the history because um, the other thing that surprised me is yeah. now we talk about the um, uh, the cultivation that happens in the late 18th century, early 19th century. There's a guy named uh, you would know this, Kashif El Al Saltane. Yes. who smuggled tea sap- saplings and seeds from, uh, he was actually a Calcutta. French tip. He goes from it to India, gets this stuff, and then he starts cultivating it. And it becomes something that is cultivated now in the north of Iran, you know, the Caspian yes. Sea. Yes. And that on. But I was surprised to learn that tea is so popular in Iran. We know that part, but that over 90% of the tea in Iran is imported. It's not made in Iran. No, so I just is. assumed... Sure. That tea was, you know, made in Iran. But there's reason but... behind it. You're absolutely oh. right. First of all, there are rumors about it. If your next um, intelligent person will tell you about the rumors about the guy who brought the tea, because there are so many rumors he brought him in his hand stick, which is not right. And then we had Chinese um, bushes coming to Iran because we have Assamic and Chinese, and you can t- taste the difference between them. Uh, same, same went for um, Black Sea. The same happened in Turkey and Georgia regarding the tea um, culture. Um, what I was going to say, <laughs> talk too much. The fact that most of the tea is imported in Iran. Yeah, but I forgot what I was going to say. You were saying you were going to give the reason why it's imported. I mean, pr- presumably because they can't cultivate remember. enough inside Iran yes. for, the, for the demands of the population. Oh, yes, yes. The reason is uh, the lack of support after revolution and also the greediness of businessmen, and mm-hmm. also the, the diversion of Iranian taste in tea. Back in 1970s, we had some twining because we are from good families, so we had proper tea, twining, I remember. And in mid 70s, um, Earl Grey entered Iran. And I remember we would go to good houses and they would have Earl Grey and we would think this is the smell of tea. This is how proper tea smells like, uh, which is not true because it's an it's a, it's, it's added aroma, which comes from the skin of a, uh, like a lemon from China called bergamot, which, mm. is, which is similar to lemon, but it's got thinner skin anyway, yeah. uh, which apparently was invented the idea in 18th century, 19th century in Britain. I don't know. And um, so we had that. So keep that going and the revolution happens and suddenly you can add this flavoring to teas. And there's cheap tea coming from Ceylon. So businessmen started using this first for this lovely aroma in Iran. So they imported cheap tea from Ceylon, added this, and people started loving it. And, and, and the government did nothing. Maybe people in there were part of the deal, I don't know. But they did nothing. So the Iranian tea, which was fantastic, it was really good. It's from our culture. It's um, being harvested by hundreds, uh, hundreds of people. Families went down. That tea came up. And then another horrible thing happened was... Um, funny sorry, funny how we can't, we can't even have one conversation without the impact <laughs> of the disastrous impact of the Islamic revolution. Not yes. one, you know, yeah, even, yeah. even a conversation about tea. What, but, I'll just yeah, give you ahead. one good advertising. There's a group of young guys called Lou. Luti, they are on the Instagram as well. They started going to the to the to the to the to the grandmothers and fathers in harvesting tea. They actually go and pick up the tree leaves on top, and they're doing fantastic hand roll tea. And I'm trying to spread it everywhere, and they're really good. So it's, thank God there are some people doing that. So that came, and also um, lack of knowledge because what I've experienced um, in the last forty years is. Um, um, the enhancement of uh, superstition and suppression of knowledge, which happened everywhere in Iran. So people are into superstition and they believe everything. So there is this belief spread by many stupid people who claim to be scientists or experts that tea is bad for you. That you have too much tea, it gives you sangue collier. Mm. Yeah, no, no, that, that, that is, I, you know, every day, imagine every time I have so breakfast in a better occasion which is my line for my tea ceremony which i have prepared here as well i'm going to show you 
they come up with this stupid thing that it, it gives you uh, kidney stone. It is bad for your heart. It poisons you. That's why suddenly the tea in Iran has become very weak. And, and like Abzipo or Ajandide. Okay. And, and uh, that's why the whole tea culture in Iran has gone dead, in my opinion. It's gone really bad. Tea culture now exists properly in Turkey. They prop they properly and make it. it. Does. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and as someone who uh, I I I love, I, of course, I can't go to Iran these days, but I so I go regularly to Turkey so I can get as close to Iran as possible. And yeah. and I just love the tea and the kamarbarik and yeah, the, yeah, you know, and they're properly the brewed and of it in yeah. Turkey, all of that. But I was going to ask you because you are you you have an interesting perspective as someone who lives in the UK. I mean, yes. British. I was born in England. I know that England is is a is a, a tea culture I yes. mean, you know there, there's f- famous stories books movies made about living in in England and you're constantly making tea that the yes. way that we think about that as Iranians um do you think Iranians outdo the Brits in your in your experience when it comes to our obsession with tea I think Irish people are the biggest consumer of tea and coffee I think I read I mean there was a few years ago we out drink tea. Um, I doubt it because I live in Britain and I think we very much are always proud, you know, that we always are the best and the number one. Even if it's in misery, we are more miserable than anyone else. You know, <laughs> if it's if things are expensive, I was comparing prices in Britain here and Iran, and somebody said, Oh, the prices are very similar. We just want to be number one in everything. So I don't <laughs> think so. I think British people drink a hell lot of tea. It's unbelievable yeah. drink. They even drink tea with food, which in Iran, based on the false knowledge, they don't. They even started not to drink tea after the but, food. They think they but, die. But, but here's what I'm going to tell you, yeah. and I know this as someone who grew up in England and who often spends time there. Yeah. The British, as much tea as they they we, I mean uh, the Brits drink, they are not as OCD about tea as Iranians are. Let me get let me get into this now because no that's Iranian, true. Yeah. There are everything, I mean, just in the same way that you say we have to be number one and everything, everything also yeah. has its its specifications when mm-hmm. it comes to being Iranian. And this is the way we do it right. Yes. Uh, you in this documentary that you made, you, you at one point you do your own little tea ceremony and you say there are three elements to a perfect <laughs> cup of Persian tea. Can yeah. you remember them? You yeah, yeah, them? yeah. Go ahead. Labduz. Lab chas lab suz. Lab duz means so you shut up, it's so good you don't say anything. Lab suz, it has to be very hot, which they say shouldn't be hot because it can give you a throat cancer. And lab chas means it has to be gas, stringent, and bitter. But I added another element, which is the fourth element, because I'm such a silly boy. I said lab boost, it should kiss your lips. Because I've I've added the element of emotion to our tea ceremony. And I believe I've created a new tea ceremony for Iranians. That so far, which is a line from my friend who is a poet, Afshir Babazadeh, who wrote a book in early 1990s, a book of poetry. And that line, so far, always stuck to my head. And I tried to recreate it. So it, I did it. So um, there's an element of emotion and um, time. I would say time because in I believe in my tea ceremony, I connect myself to my ancestors. Or I connect myself to future or connect myself to some other land by the objects I put next to my tray. And I live, I drink tea with the tray. That's what I do. So that's why I have these objects, for instance. If you want to see, you want to see? Well, it, most, mostly people are listening. So just describe as you... Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm, you're going to see so you can... Demo. TV guys. So... Um... <laughs> How can I look, is watching look back in anger? All right. This is uh, like a little tray, and which is metal or wood or something. And it has to be well-made. It can't be like a processed food. It can't be a processed technology or processed artwork. It has to be old or genuine. And I always put this a flower. Is, this is how you serve the tea. You're yeah, describing it, it changes the everything. importance. Yeah, you can't you just, must have a flower. You can't just put a... You yeah, can't no, just no. put the tea in a mug and put that on a... On no, 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 a, not in my... You have, to, you have to spend time for tea. So it has to have a light, right? Uh, so right light angle. So you see shadows. I mean, you can't see shadows here because the light is too bright. Flower, 
and always have an object. I mean, now I put this re <laughs> recreation of a suit. Are you saying that whenever you serve tea, you yeah. have a fresh flower on the on the sofre on the you know, on the serving uh, tray? Um, after this beep goes, ninety nine percent of time I create this kind of a thing, and I have like an ancient vase, which is this is Sasania. This whistle, which is like a shape of a cow. Yeah. But... And then a nice cop. Yeah, I definitely have. That's odd. Is this just is this just for you or do you do this for I mean, sorry, I should say, is this just when you have guests or do you do this when you're no. by yourself? By myself. By yourself you have a tea ceremony. Yeah, every morning or at night. When I put ugly I mean pretty interesting stuff like this orange, which has been really colored and shaped under the sun it's so real it's so organic it's got black lines on it and i sort of gather things i have normally nice teapot i don't have it here but this is something i gave to my nephew it's from china and these are like proper teapots from the clay called yijing which is so fine it's almost like china so, so hang on a, hang on a second hang on, hang on you wake up in the morning yes i mean this is a lot of effort to go to it is, for... i tell you something I wake cell. up 2 a.m. I wake up 2 a.m. and I put on the tea and, and my tea to brew is, is all the objects are well thought and I got even the and, um, Gusvan skin on it as a as a tea tea uh, what do you call this in my English is getting worse um, tea cozy tea cozy damn okay. point, uh, tea cozy yeah and and my teapots are always like 300 years or 200 years they're genuine or has to be very fine china mm -hmm. Or something in Wilhelm. So from 2 a.m. because I need eight to ten hours for the taste I want. Because you know, tea uh, like wine. You really are the right person for this episode, buddy. <laughs> yes. And by the way, we, the answer, the question has been answered. Are Iranians OCD about tea? Uh, <laughs> do you set an alarm for 2 a.m. in the morning? No, no, or I wake just, up. You wake up. I, wake I have up to like make that. tea. Yes. What is this? Just came what up. is going on? What was that, dude? Is there somebody else on the call? <laughs> Yeah, there's colors coming. <laughs> I mean, like, anyway, let me continue. So I wake up and I, I tell you something. I'm so sleepy, but I have to do it. So I, I brew the tea. I put it there with a candle. Every and day. I know it's, yeah, every, almost at least five times a week. What if and you have company? Same? You do this? Like company. Somebody staying over. No, a, when, a when somebody's staying over, I friend. do coffee. But I do the similar table for it. I, I okay. create this story. But it's coffee. I can't be bothered because we have to jump over them. And they wake up. And you know what happens when they wake up. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not yeah. easy for you. Yeah. yeah, then you cannot sleep. <laughs> and anyway, so so that is that happened like three years ago. <laughs> anyway, so the so you, you, <laughs> let me so go back I, to tea. I, I, I when you have the special friend, you make the tea at two in the morning. Two in the morning. So after eight hours, because you see, I choose which garden, what year, because I have to, you know, you have to choose uh, the height of the garden, the country comes from, the origin of the plant, and the okay. year are important to the taste of the tea. So you cannot do this, what I'm saying, with every tea. Some teas, you can't brew them more than 10 minutes. Some that are one hour, some that are six hours, some 15 hours. I had tea brewed for 36 hours because different layers of aroma and taste comes out. And if it's a good tea, it still stays sharp and clear. So my teas are like that. They're normally from Sri Lanka, from a garden called New Vatanakanda, because they have this, silver tips. This is very time, time intensive. Yeah, but that is uh, a, like a namaz. It's like um, huh, it's a meditation. I don't believe in God. No, it's, it's like it's, it is a ceremony. And because yes. of that, my mood changes, my thought changes. I sometimes put a picture of my father at his young age and i'm having tea oh. with him you know or or, or different I, I have this thing like just recently got it this akamenia and i will have mm. a tea with this or i'm you, going to have you, serious question do you do any i mean do you do you have the tv on or do you have any music yeah, tv playing? is always on and i tell you why tv is always on so you look at the object Gian. look you can use this object for a tea dry bread okay and Walnut and uh -huh. almonds are the best, in my opinion. And dry bread. This is a cornbread, but dry bread they taste fantastic for tea. And you can use well, this something like that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
you took me out of the meditation a little bit when you said the TV's on. So I basically, tell you why. I tell what you why you're actually TV's talking on. about is you make yourself breakfast and you watch TV. Yeah, I That's tell you why. I, I tell you. Because it's always good to see other, the whole world around you. But what I use is I use a very clever idea, in my opinion. I use the light of the tea and the colors that it changes to look at the surface of the tea cup. I have some pictures on my website you can see. For instance, so you sometimes, use the light of the TV? Yeah, yeah, the TV. For, the, for the reflections. Uh -huh. Wow. And, and, I, and sometimes the sky. So it depends because if I wake up like 6 a.m. to have the tea because it's winter or something, then the, tea, the TV has to be. Otherwise, the, light, the sky. So it, it use the light. How much the tea colors. do you have, by the way? How much tea do you drink in that ceremony? Uh, a Just whole one. one and a half liter teapot, which is this teapot. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I normally do twice a day. Okay. But um, it's probably actually, it sounds very healthy. It sounds like a, a good thing to do. You, you've you said, a, you, like in that, I'm going to come back to your practices. Don't worry. Yes, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. um, but in that doc, you also said a few things about, because I want to get into the culture of how we are OCD yes. in so many ways, the Iranians. You said a few things that I honestly couldn't tell if they're real or if they're jokes or what. You right. said that brides to be have to know how to make tea for the groom's family. Oh, yeah, that's is old it... fashioned. Yeah, of course. And I, I'm is sure that really you're... a thing. That, that yeah, was it actually is a, a thing. thing. It was a thing up to age of sixteen. I was in Iran. I remember this. Uh, we had the chassegar, a volunteer <laughs> for one of the girls in our family, which was old fashioned life in those days. And actually, she brought tea to serve and they were looking and she did something really naughty because she didn't like the guy. So the tea was of course made by the mother. So it's always perfect or by the, someone who works there. So it was fantastic. I remember in those days, tea was real tea in Iran. It wasn't like this shit, the drinking, which is like a yellow water and perfumed water. So it was, and then she was just going like that. And they said, why uh, you're a bit flimsy. He said, I forgot to wear my glasses. I can't see anything. So that was her naughtiness, just to reject the volunteer guy. So it did exist. And even now, even I right now, I don't, um, sometimes if I have a girl around, I do that as a joke. And I'm actually serious. I serve her tea and say, what do you think about my tea? So it's like a chassigari. So I recreate that as well, but that is not early in the morning. It would be in the afternoon when I serve the tea. And then wine, of course. It hasn't borne the fruit of marriage yet for you, though, however. <laughs> no. <laughs> More, I'm, I'm, I'm at the age of divorce right now. Actually, if I was married, I would be divorced. You're at the age, you're at the age of your third divorce. Yes. You haven't, <laughs> uh, you haven't, you haven't mastered the tea uh, through all these ceremonies enough to to actually capture to put a ring on. on yeah, the, uh, exactly. It's the, not la It's right? not the tea that you kiss yet. Yeah. Let, yeah. let me ask you. What, Don't be jealous, I, I, though. I, of course, I'm jealous. Of course, I, I, the opportunity to be to be with you would be the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, <laughs> clearly, I talk about how I love the Kamar Barik little yeah. istikhan in Turkey, and and yes. and I know that in our tradition, I think about my mom and the beautiful glass. We, you know, we have this tradition of serving tea in small delicate Kamar glasses. Barik. It's yes. almost bizarre you wouldn't expect somebody to put it in a big mug the way north americans or or the or some uh, british do where did that tradition come from and yeah, why is that tradition in my little research was that originally it comes from the idea of tulip and also comes maybe from wine cups of the early days but it's the tulip shape and tell you something um, i went and did experiment i mean in my documentary you can see first of all that the 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 the, the uh, the, the quality of the texture of the teapot is important to change the taste of tea. That's one thing. And the best one, for instance, for Assam tea, in my opinion, is pewter or metal. For mm. other teas like Darjeeling or even other ones are a bone china or glass because bone china, it's a surface has to be so reflective and shiny, it makes the aroma comes up and we think the tea tastes yes. better. Yeah, so I have a and, glass tea maker, and the tea always tastes different than it does when I make it in a teapot. And yeah, I yeah. never thought of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. actually, that the gents of the uh, yeah, the gents uh, is important, of, and, it... of course, and it has to be born China or Yijing, but they make the tea taste stronger. So it must have good tea. 
You must have, and you must know how long you want to keep it. And the reason I have this, I'm going to tell you why I brought this specially for you. It's a, it is a tea bag. So I'm going to come back. So you have to, bring, and they taste different. So that's one thing. And also the cup. I mean, this is a lousy Kamal body. I have to be more exaggerated and shouldn't have this. So you hold it by there. It shouldn't have an arm, right? It yeah, it shouldn't. Have a... I, I, it's not my home. I got 50 yeah. different tea It's tea a cups. mess. It's a terrible yeah. tea. <laughs> tea yeah. and, it's a disaster. And, the phone's yeah. ringing. Yeah. <laughs> and the aroma, you know, that shape enhances the aroma. The another wow. glass that I use is something like this, a flute shape. That I only put a little bit at the bottom and then really? I smell like a, it. Like a champagne glass. Almost like a champagne. And also in China, when I went to Taiwan, I was to the this um, um, exhibition of tea in Taiwan about 10 years ago. They have invented um, a kind of a tiny thing like this made of China that you pour the tea from these teapots into this. Yeah. Then you empty it in another, you know, they drink in small cups like this. Uh, yeah, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they smell this and drink that because the aroma on this is amazing. And oh, this they is... smell the, what, the champagne glass and they drink yeah, it yeah, from yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody's this... been to a Chinese restaurant where they get the, the green tea in a very small cup. Yes, it's a yes. Tiny little, yeah. Because they, so, they yeah. drink it quickly. Even the Arabs uh, tea co uh, coffee cup are the same. It's one slip. Even the wines in the old days were like one. They were like this. And this is another way of making tea. This is like a teapot. It's got a guy one. Yeah. You put your tea here and water. You put it here. You do that. And then you empty it to a smaller cup and you drink it and you use, keep on using it like a teapot. So that's yeah, another. 90% 90, 90 of our audience is audio. So they. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, what I just explained was. Uh, it's like a Chinese uh, teacup with a lid on it, and you brew the tea inside the cup. You can do that, and they call it gaiwan. And you also, you referenced you go ahead yeah. yeah. And also these teapots, which are very small, they're like as much as a little orange or even lemon. This is quite a big one. You brew, you put you fill it up with large leaf tea, put hot water. You keep it for thirty seconds. You empty it and you drink it, and you did all the time. So it's like a tea bag. It brews very quickly in this. And as uh, six times or seven times you brew and empty it within 30 seconds, the tea in this teapot becomes stronger and stronger. That's another thing called um, Gaiwan. I, no, no, it's called Kung Fu style of tea drinking. Now, 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 you, you referenced this earlier, but part of our OCD-ness is that Iranians love to have their tea... Samovar, yeah. No? no? Scalding no. hot. Very oh, hot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And when it's not super hot, yeah. the host usually says, oh, let, let me change that for you so that it's super hot. What, what, is, what is that about? That is about, again, I think that is uh, to do with masculinity of the old days and mm. also your experience in tea making. Like uh, I went to uh, Georgia, Tbilisi, they're good tea drinkers. They even have some of our, because some of our, um, in my opinion, is a creation from Mongolia. It's the it's a digazut pass. It's like the hot pot moved and became samovar in Russia and then came to us. In there, there was this um, Azerbaijani woman who was in a, a sulfur bath, and we had tea together. It's the end of my program. You can see it, and she she had this tea um, in in a kamar barik with a, with jam albalu jam, uh, which is a sour cherry jam, and she drank it. And as I went, it burned my mouth. And she said, you're not a tea drinker, you're not a man. And that I realized is because she, <laughs> she is a proper tea drinker. I'm just a kid, you know, in, in the world of tea drinking, the high ranks, hierarchies can drink that lapsus tea, but it's not good for you. It can give you throat cancer. I heard. But what, throat cancer? Really? Yeah, because, because of hot? the heat. Yeah. But I, I like the I like it when it's super hot because it it uh, increases the chances that you're gonna sip it slowly. Slowly, yeah, yeah. To, because you're not, you you don't down. do it yeah like the way she she would go quickly to a throat. Yeah, you keep it you exactly you sip it all the time, so it's no problem in that. Absolutely. Well, let me but let me ask you where you stand on the sweetness thing because zero. Um, we don't use okay. 
Well, then let me ask you, if you were to use shikat, yeah. we don't, of course, use sugar. We use gandum. We use sugar cubes. Cubes, yes. And while most people, most cultures would put the sugar in the in tea. There, yeah. We do it in our tea. You take the sugar cube and put it in. Is that what you do? You put it in your mouth and then, I mean, yeah. you say you don't I use may it at all. do. I'm, because the tea is all about the aroma and the taste and anything else ruins. Like, for instance, I go to to place and they say, oh, we made it with saffron. Yeah, disgusting. Right? Because property has so, it's so That's complicated. Disgusting. Huh? That's disgusting? Saffron? Yeah, for me as a tea drinker, you shouldn't add anything to a property. Tea. What because, about rose water? No, this is for, for you. No, no, this, this, this means the tree tea wasn't good enough. You had to add this. Because when you taste the tea, it gradually changes. Even in the Chinese philosophy, when you have a ulung tea, because there are so many different teas, is, is uh, is sort of um, processed in different ways. Black tea, then you get brown tea, then you get even yellow tea, then green tea, and white tea is the way you process tea. becomes black or something. So oolong is in between. So uh, uh, fruit taste come, comes out of the uh, leaf. And um, it's a tea of conversation, tea of philosophy, because the aroma is different. And as you talk and you're sipping, the different flavors keep changing with oxidization in your mouth so oolong tea or green tea or even black you don't tea. So when people put like rose petals in the tea or something like that you don't you don't like that no huh? definitely not for me it's good for you know parties because they're not proper tea <laughs> what about cardamom oh no these are these are i like that like, like, like uh, southeast of iran yeah that's southeast of iran that is they they put um cardamom or darchin um cinnamon yeah, yeah. this these are again when, when the tea is not a good quality you add that of course <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you something about pahlu, which is like uh, tea cube by the side that's you put by the teeth i went to the to north um i was going to the north sudan to north sweden with the Sumi people, Sami people were the uh, Inuits or the, uh, the the native of Sweden, and they live in um, the tents, the proper. One. And he gave me tea, a coffee. It was amazing. He made coffee exactly the way we make tea. He put it in a really nice teapot, met up straight into the fire, and mm. then poured it and gave it to, and then gave me a sugar cube and put it here. Said, "Sip it with sugar cube in your mouth." Said, "Oh my God, we do the same in Iran." He said, we did it for a long time. And he said, we used to trade coffee in the old days and we started from those days. So this idea of that we wet the tea cube in tea to, to ward off the majesty, the unholiness of the sugar cube because it came from, I don't know, um, England, something. It's your next intelligent person is going to tell you, I think it's not correct. And and when are we? Um, I'm working my way through to the end of these. Uh, I've almost come to the end here of these specifications of these particular ideas that we have. Yeah. Um, because I love it. I love it. There's so much ritualization when it comes to Iranians and tea. Yeah. When are we meant to drink tea? I uh, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, people who listen to Rook regularly will know that. Um, I went on a a, a journey with some of the Rook team to my first real, like authentic, real, real, real calipache. Uh, and uh, which right. I quite... Thanks, I'm a vegan. So that's, that was really beautiful but, sight. Uh, but what was interesting to me is we were sitting, before they brought the calipache, they brought tea. Oh, okay. And then after the calipache, they brought tea. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and which was interesting to me, like you wouldn't go in say North American culture, you wouldn't go for a burger and fries and they bring tea before it. I yes. mean, they probably wouldn't be afterwards either, but, but you, you think of tea as an after the uh, mm. meal uh, thing to do. Uh, tell me about the tradition of tea okay. before them. Okay. I think um, that is again, because of the Islamic culture, because in the, in the Europe, you have beer. Okay. Before and after um, in the ancient time, I read about breakfast and breakfast. I think also in Iran, uh, was black beer. You would drink something like that if you could get hold of. And one of the main export, exports of this kind of beer was Babylon and also into Egypt. So in the old days, in ancient time, we didn't have tea, of course, but 
very soon coffee as a waking up thing and also tea as enhancement of your um, awareness but definitely in the morning but we had also asrune which is like the um, afternoon tea for sure but I think when men have conversation like pubs, their beers, the people gather together with gathering tea houses. So you have tea all the time. I remember in the old days, everywhere we would go, they would offer us tea. And barista, which Persian is called Abdarchi, uh, were always part of any office was the tea house. They would bring you tea in a small kamar body and then anaka. So I think originally started as a uh, I would say as a social thing because tea would be very difficult to make and not every household could own them. I heard like one of the 500 years that started as yeah, 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 yeah. But, but uh, again, ask your historians for instance, same in Philippines. Philippine people, I heard they're mostly poor, they don't have kitchen, that's why there's so much street food. And also in Thailand, mostly they eat outside because they can't do it. In. So, I think the tea started, in my opinion, it's just a guess as a social event, then went to our homes. And then it became something you spend time in a conversation. You went to Kalipache, and while you're waiting, you have tea, and then afterwards. So I think it's, it's something that gradually added on. I have to say something very important here, that people in Iran believe, and also there's some pseudoscience misunderstood, mis, um, mistakenly understood that tea is bad for you after food. It absorbs the iron. So you shouldn't drink it after food. This is not true. It is true, but not true. Because I went to the uh, Board of Medical Sciences in Britain and asked that tea does take iron away from food, but in the tiniest possible way. And if you have a disease, if you have, you're ill and you lack iron and you're taking supplements, if you have three liters of tea after food, is not good for you. Otherwise, it has no problem. And if you ever doubt about these things, you can always drink it 20 minutes after food. It has no harm. I drink tea all the time. Even Chinese people drink with the food. British mm. people with the food, they drink tea and nothing has came to them any harm. So that myth has to go. By the way, you and I, very memorably for me, went for uh, Chinese food a few years ago in Soho in, in yes. London. Yeah. I don't remember you being vegan. Were you vegan then? Was I became vegan, vegan, but the food we had was vegan. Was After that night? Year. Yeah. No, no. It, it, that, it, so that food I get, we ate together was a Buddhist. Um, it was a monk vegetable with crispy noodles. So it had tadik, tadik of noodles, reshte, and then it had a uh, monk vegetable. So it, had, it was vegan. It was inven different invention. But I became mm -hmm. vegan about three months ago, four months ago, but I'm not religious. Like recently, I had crickets with a fantastic American-Mexican family having sotol, which is tequila, mascal, and sotol is a different drink right. come from Shivava right. region. And I had cricket because I'm not religious about it, but I'm vegan. Right. Oh, that's cricket doesn't really count as meat. I mean, come on. No, but also I gave up my loved mustiki say. The oh. strain yogurt, which I used to take right. every day. I used to have half a kilo. You can't have moss. Why, 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 why are you vegan? What, and I mean, cash. Not that, and cash. No, I don't know vegan. why, because I thought it's a different step. And it's interesting. And it opens up other things in you. And I, and I saw this amazing documentary called The Changing Game in Netflix, which was created five years ago. And I realized, oh, my God. There's so much about human... <laughs> diet and um, evolution and our body then I, after that film it convinced me that it's a better way to live but I'm not suggesting it should be any it's just a matter of choice second last question yes. so you're almost done Yes. <laughs> second, second last question Yes. Uh, so far in the conversation when you've been speaking about your tea ceremony and the tea you drink and the tea you make and the tea you absorb and the tea you like it, it sounds like we're mostly talking about black tea or caffeinated tea and ob obviously you would know there's been this in recent years a surge of popularity of specialty teas like herbal teas green teas yeah not and a tea gl gl global trend towards diverse health conscious beverage choices i don't notice that with iranians normally at the end of a dinner party i have i might say because i have a bunch of different teas i say oh would you like ginger tea or you know yeah. this tea, that tea. And they're, they're just like can you just bring persian tea which is yeah, yeah. like a 
kind of a a, a black or a earl gray you know kind of a uh, yeah. a, a caffeinated tea do you um what what is your what take on on iranians and, you, and herbal tea um it's i think it, it moved again with the with with two different tendencies one is again superstition that tea is not good for you and also tendency towards the old um medicine mixed with khurafat also having fun because you know is enough of this tealess experiment other things it's called damnush and the rise of aktari ha the um um what aktari is like um old school pharmacists have no education them and so all these teas are together to to create this damnush and also there is this belief that tea, green tea is better than um, black tea, which is not true. Again, this is like a myth. Uh, and also it's not necessarily well, the stronger. Green tea doesn't have as much caffeine, and it does. It's, no, it's, no, it's... no. A very, a very tiny, no, I think it's tiny more. Uh, imagine coffee is 20 units. Black tea is like five, and maybe green tea is three. It's not really this. Uh, and also health-wise, black tea is just as good as green tea. Hmm. But we feel better. Also, white, there's a belief that white tea is the healthiest. It has antioxidants and all that. I mean, the amount of antioxidants in this, which helps you not to get old or, or rust, is nothing. Mm-hmm. The highest uh, antioxidant in the, in the food is, right, is um, black currant and uh, things like that. These are like, not doesn't even count. And uh, so black tea for me is definite. And I will never add anything else to it because if it comes from a right year, right height, right garden, and the right home with the right style of brewing. Thank you, sir. On this not brewer, OCD at all. signing off. Not, not OCD at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a final question to you or a final uh, opportunity here. Sure. I have if, also something to tell you about Persian because, you know, you had a film showing you in Canada. I was there. And this guy came up and say, why you say Persian? Baby? I'm Azari. We were calling it talking to Persians. Yeah, and yeah, say, yeah. And I have the question now. I have the question now. I did so much research. By the way, answer go ahead. the question. You asked me the last question. I give you that. Have the answer to that or the question? The answer to that. Right, right. The guy said, because we have no, a No, no, I, I know question. the answer. No, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm oh, going to okay. ask you that. Okay. The guy said, why are, you know, this talking to Persians series that you have, yeah. why don't you call it talking to Iranians? Yeah, yeah. You're being, um, mm-hmm. we're, you know, we are Iranian. Why you're being, not being inclusive or something by calling it, uh, yeah. or you're... I tell you now the answer. What is the answer? The answer is this. This is after many research and talking to scholars and doing research. Even I went oh. to Italy. And by accident, I came up to this answer. You see, before Persians, uh, first of all, our, our culture, which is a mixture of mother language, religion, art, belief, and law, was from West China all the way to end of today's Turkey, Sakais and Hittites. They all spoke, when we speak now to Afghan people, they might understand it once as oh, Tajiks, yeah? We're all speaking Persian, but somehow it's our own dialect. That massive land all the way to Persian Gulf and part of uh, South Arabia, they all spoke the same thing. In the old days, it would be called Aryan because Darius in his um, tablet says, I spoke, we wrote in Aryan. So that's even worse than what you think, but None of these people thought that they were any different to the other. And imagine when the Achaemenians took over uh, Mods, Medates, and everything, the land was called the land of Persia because it was the first Persian Empire, the first Iranian or Aryan Empire that all unified by the same law. Language was official, not necessarily the religion and the law and everything, and the armies went. So it became one land for the first time. Before it was different people with similar similarities. Funny enough, so the language became Persian and the land. If the Medates would take over, our language would become Medate, would be called that. If the Hittites 
would take over 2000 years ago. We were speaking Hittite language and it was called Hittite Gulf in so Persian Gulf. And this was be called Persian, not Persian, Midate tea or something. It's just a name. Even after the, uh, the Achaemenes, even um, Greeks would call the, the king of Iran the Midate king. And even the language, they would still call it Midates. They didn't know any difference between the Persian. But isn't, Mesod, isn't the argument we're way down the rabbit hole that has nothing to do with tea, but isn't the argument that not all Iranians are Persians? No, they are all Persians because it's the name of our culture and our history and our mutuality. Like Americans. In Amer Iran was like in America, with so many different people in it, so many different races, but they all believed they were from Iran, beige. So it's the same as, they're all Americans, but they could be this. There's so much uh, distortion of history, languages came over, people believe that they belong to somewhere else. These are all so-called by Trump, the fake history of Iran. But the language and something, it's just a name. If, as I said, the Madha, the Midas would take over this language, I'm talking, yes, so it's just yeah. a name and it doesn't mean a race at all. It was a name of a race or a group of people, but now it's the name of everybody else. Like Iran is the same. But not all Persians are Iranians, right? No, all Persians are Iranians. <laughs> and all Iranians are Persians? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can say that, yes. Since the Achaemenian time, because that was the name of our language and our land after, it's just a name. So so the final question I was going to ask you is, yeah. as much as you've had this love affair with tea, Yes. That tea is your perhaps your most constant companion. And your wine. Closest... Red wine. <laughs> That's a separate episode. Yeah. <laughs> but it is tea, you, yes. Tea is most of the To the, the non-Iranian or and perhaps even the Iranian non-tea drinker, somebody who's not as obsessed. Yes. How would you, in a very brief uh, moment, how would you sell it to those people? How would I sell it to those people? How would you sell your love affair with tea? How would That's I sell true. that? That's interesting. Yeah. That's difficult. Maybe I can never be a good salesman. <laughs> well, you've done a good job of it already, I think. But why should someone invite regular tea drinking into their life? Yeah, I think it because tea... Like a friend of mine in San Diego said that people drink wine in a bar, they should, they should have a ceremony for it like it was before. So for me, tea drinking would give you relaxation and connects you to so many things in life that, do not, that you don't have time to think about. If you give time to brew tea and drink tea, that is what I do with tea. And every time I drink tea, I try, I sort of go to a different dimension. At least I make myself believe that, that with tea, you create that moment of calmness, like meditation, because tea has warmth, has aroma, has color. It has history of so many events in Iran and in the world today. It has such a history. It came from the dragon root, which hmm. we don't know about, which was, we know Silk Road. But there was a dragon road where the tea um, walkers would have tea bricks on their shoulders and walk it to our lands and further away. So it has so much. When I drink this, I just connect to that garden in north of Sri Lanka and then to my parents, to, to that office in Iran in 1970s. And I just, even in my program recordings in Turkey when I was enjoying the tea for the first time outside my home and connects me to even the uh, to the Safavis. But it's just a moment that you can create a, 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 a virtual reality. Beautifully done. Okay. Beautifully done. Thank you. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to go and you know what I'm going to make for myself? <laughs> a good tea without a tea bag. A coffee. Actually, Nescafe. I'm going to make Nescafe. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. going to hold the Nescafe in front of a television so I can look through it and see... <laughs> The, the dark the strength of the next cafe. <laughs> Make sure nobody spits in it, like the films. <laughs> Make it love yourself. You. Thank you so much for the for the all the wisdom. Uh, we you. miss you. Come back to Toronto, and um, I I I I feel like I've been to the tea ceremony, and I 
and I look forward to many more. Even Looking forward to see you, man, and, and talk to you and everybody in Persian. Thank you. Durud. Khodafiz. 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 Khodafiz.